The basic way of slicing. Here I would like to explain the kiritsuke, the slices which are used when making nigiri. When we talk about kiritsuke, it generally means slices of fish used for making sushi. The average size of kiritsuke is about 8 cm long and 3.5 cm wide. Its weight may vary up to the fish, but in restaurants, in case of abalone or squid which have stiff flesh, it is usually 6 to 9 grams. In case of white flesh fish, it is usually 10 to 12 grams, and for tuna and when you want it to look big, it is usually 12 to 15 grams. The preferable weight is around 12 grams. If the slice has that weight, it is not too big to eat, nor too small and not filling enough. If you slice for practicing many times the nigiri, slice it slightly bigger so it does not crack even if you repeatedly practice. The way of slicing the upper flesh and the lower flesh differs. In this movie, the upper flesh backside is used. In case you use the lower flesh, place the tail to the upper left and start slicing. As this is the lower flesh, place the tail to the lower left and start slicing from the tail side. The first slice is the tip of the tail and it is very fibrous which makes it not easy to eat so just cut one slice. When slicing, place your left hand fingertips on the flesh and slide largely the knife that you hold with your right hand. In case you have a small slice, as when you slice the tip of the tail, you may butterfly it to give more width and also cut the string. This way of butterflying is called kannon biraki. From the following slice, just slice it normally. Here the tips are. Hold well the flesh with your left hand fingertips so it does not move. Slice it so it has the right length and width. Slice it so it has the right weight. Do not forget to make koba. These are the four important points. If you move the knife forward and backward many times, you change its angle and as this will make difference in grade on the surface, you may not have beautiful slices. Move the knife largely with the index you placed on its spine. If you push lightly toward the blade edge with the index, the cutting quality increases. If you want to change the length of the slice, now you have 45 degrees against the yellow tail. But if you change the angle to 30 degrees, the length gets longer, and if you change it to around 19 degrees, you have slices that have the same width as the flesh. If you want to change the width of the slices, you change the laying degree. When you cut perpendicularly to the cutting board, and if the fish block is 2 cm high, the slices will be 2 cm high. But if the more you lay your knife, the wider the slice gets. As I told you at the beginning of this movie, the basic slice size is 8 cm length and 3.5 cm width. And you have to slice to make it weight 12 grams. Plus, as the tail part is narrower, when slicing it, the knife's angle should be oblique. But when you get close to the middle part of the fish, the flesh width may be 8 cm. In that case, you have to slice it perpendicularly. So remember that you have to change the angle of the knife when cutting the tail part and when cutting the middle part. Next, I would like to explain about the koba. The koba is the difference in grade of the slice surface. Having this difference, when you make the sushi, it gets three-dimensional and excellent in appearance. Furthermore, thanks to the difference in grade, the soy sauce will remain on the slice and when the customer transports the sushi to the mouth, the soy sauce won't drip on the cloth. Next, let's slice the belly part. When slicing the belly part, it is usually more triangular than the back part. In case the flesh is oblique, place the blade edge on the oblique side and after making an incision, move largely in an arc the tip of the knife and slice it. If you just slice it, you will have triangular slices and only the central area of them will have 3.5 cm width. And if you make sushi with these slices, you won't be able to cover the entire rice bowl with it. So, as we want to have 3.5 cm width on every slice, make sure you have this width when slicing. Next, the part which is called tenmi, which is the upper part of the fillet that you use for making slices, usually has a triangular shape. The flattest, the part which has a large area and beautiful comes to the bottom. 
But in this movie, as the cut surface is the flattest and large, that's why it comes to the bottom. In addition, when slicing, to make the slicing easier, start slicing from the lower part and keep the high part for the end. Same as for the previous belly part, place the blade edge on the top of the inclined surface and move the knife tip in an arc and slice. Make sure the width doesn't get short and pay attention to the angle and inclination of the knife, taking into consideration the flesh height and width. The last piece, you don't have to use it if it does not have the right weight. If it has enough weight, butterfly it and use it as one slice. Finally, the saku, which is the fish block, should be placed close to you on the cutting board and that way you can freely move your hands because it won't hit against the cutting board. This can also be said for when filleting a fish. Make a pile of 5 slices or 10 slices so you can easily count after. And when piling them up, make sure to pile them horizontally with the koba facing up or vertically with the koba side down. This is the basic way of slicing. If you would like to know how to prepare the yellowtail fillet, the basic way of skinning, the basic way of making sushi, please watch other videos. Thank you very much for watching. 最後にこの動画の説明文を見てもらうと東京寿司アカデミーのホームページや体験レッスン海外求人や寿司に関しての情報を発信するメルマガ等のリンクがございますぜひ合わせてご覧くださいその他チャンネル登録その他 SNS サイトにもこちらの動画とともにいいねを押していただけると幸いですご視聴ありがとうございました